going to get started, you're going to want to set up your scene something like this. I just have a few cylinders in the center. Then I have my camera pointed at them. And then we're going to want to go ahead and actually UV unwrap these. So we're going to select our cylinder here. We're going to press tab, press U, and then do smart UV project. And you don't have to do this. We can actually map this with object instead of UV map when we're mapping the texture. But I'm just going to show you how to do it both ways so that you can do whichever. So yeah, so then you can just do that for each of these. So tab, U, smart UV project, like so. And then now that you've done that for all of these, you're good to go. So then you can head over here to the shading tab. And then I've got these guys. Then I can just go to rendered preview. And then I just have a 3D viewport and a shading node here. You can um, uh, set up your workspace however you feel most comfortable. But yeah, for the lighting, I'm just using this default forest one because I figured bamboo trees would be in some sort of forest. Anyways, so to get started, we'll hit new right here. And then we'll type in a bamboo like this. And then we'll press shift A and search for a wave texture. Then we're going to go to edit references and then go to add-ons and search for the node wrangler add-on just to check this box right here. So you have the shortcuts in the shader editor. Then you can select this wave texture and press control T. And then I'm going to grab this guy and move him a little bit this way. And I'm going to take the wave texture up here. Then we're going to take this mapping here and we're going to change it because if we control shift and left click this wave texture here, we can see that it's sort of warping awkwardly like this. You see how it's like that. And we can sort of mess with it on here and sort of get it to fix if we go to Z. But a more effective way to get it to fix is if we change this to UV mapping like this. And then we have this on the Y. So we get the sort of bands going like this. And so, yeah, you can also map it using object and then switch this to Z. But yeah, those are just two different ways you can map this whichever you prefer. Obviously on this one, you will want to lower the scale. Whereas on the UV mapping, it's likely that you're going to want to also lower the scale, but not as much. So something like a two and then make sure you have it on Y. So yeah, those are the two different ways you can map this and you just pick whatever works best for your object. Anyways, the next step is going to be to adjust some values here. We're going to change this detail here to a 10. And then we're going to hit shift A and search for a map range node so we can sort of bring up the contrast a little bit between the blacks and the whites. And then we're gonna switch this from maximum value to a 0 0.1, which is gonna bring the whites in really um, intensely. Obviously you can switch this value and have it blend however you want. We can move it to a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that. I'll leave it at like a 0 0.15, leave it in between for now. And the next step is we're gonna wanna invert these colors because we're gonna use this as a height map. So we'll hit shift A and press search invert like this, which is going to invert everything like so. But we don't want it to be so, um, uh, the bands to be so big because we don't want the bump to be affecting everything so significantly. So we're going to hit shift A and we're going to search for a math node here. We'll put it right after the invert and we're going to switch the function on this to less than, which is going to return black for everything less than zero, whatever number we put here. So if we bring this to a zero, Anything less than zero is going to return black. So obviously it's going to be all black. But if we turn this to a 0 0.001, like so, we get this. And this is going to allow us to um, uh, use it for the bump. So then we can check clamp right here just to make sure we have all values between zero and one. Then we're going to press shift A and search for a bump node down here. And then I'll take this value into the height of the bump node. And I'm going to check invert on this bump node. Then plug this normal into the normal of our shader. And if we can shift and left click the shader now, we can see some shadows here a little bit. And to see this better, I'm just gonna select both my other cylinders here. And then I'll select the one we already have the material on as a third and press control L. Then you can hit link materials and that will link all of their materials like this. So then I'm just gonna change this to something that's more of a bamboo color for now. We're gonna be giving a precise value later just so that we can sort of see the shadows happening here with the bump. But yeah, anyways, the next step is gonna to be to factor this into the roughness and some more bump. And to do that, we're gonna be using a noise texture here. So we'll hit Shift A and search for our noise texture. Like this. Then we're going to actually be putting a mapping node in between these two. So we'll hit Shift A and search for another mapping node like this. 
And we'll take the vector from the previous one into this vector, and then this vector into the noise texture. So if we control shift and left click on our new noise texture, we can see that it's sort of like this. And we can still see that there's some seams here, and that's because the UV unwrap isn't the best. And so to fix that, we can obviously go into the UV and touch it up. But for now, I'm gonna show you a way, you, what we're gonna do with this noise texture. We're gonna switch the scale to a one. So it's really stretched out, the detail to a 14, and the roughness all the way to a one. So it's just gonna be sort of giving us a grain here. And then we're gonna switch the scale on the Y. If you're using UV mapping, switch the scale on the Y down to a 0.25 like this, which is gonna stretch everything vertically. And I'll hit Shift A and add a map range node here so we can see this happening more clearly. And we're gonna switch this from minimum to 0 0.3 and then from maximum to 0 0.7. So now you can sort of see what is happening here. If you're gonna use object like so, then we're gonna to wanna to switch the scale on this one, the Y back to a one, and we're gonna to wanna to switch the Z to a 0.25 so that it stretches properly. So I'm gonna remain on object mapping for now. And if we preview our shader real quick, we can check our bump, make sure everything's still looking okay. Obviously, this is a bit messed up now, so I'm gonna switch this to a Z. So now you know the settings for both. If you're on object, you wanna use Z on the wave texture and Z on the, this mapping. And if you're on uh, UV coordinates, you're gonna to wanna to use Y on both. But yeah, I wanna stay on object for now, and we'll actually lower the scale to like a one, just so we get the better mapping. Anyways, just two different ways you can map it depending on whether you want to work with UVs more or you just want to get it on there to look cool quickly. Anyways, the next step is going to be adding in a bump node here. So let's shift A, search for another bump node, and we're going to be factoring in this map range to the bump. So we'll take this result and plug it into our height here, switch the strength to a 0.2, and if we control shift left click, we can preview the sort of graininess we have going on now. Awesome. And if we see it's sort of like symmetrical, it's all sort of vertical. So we're gonna switch the distortion on this noise texture to 0.5, just to give us a little bit of swirls in there. Then we'll take this normal and plug it into the normal of the other bump node. Awesome, so if we preview our shader here, obviously the color is terrible, but we can sort of see a little bit of bump happening here. Obviously I can up the strength if we want to, to like a one, and then you can see it very more, much more clearly. But yeah, anyways. To keep moving on, I'm gonna switch this back to a 0 0.2. And we'll factor this into our roughness. So we're gonna press Shift A here and search for a map range node, like this. Then we're gonna take the result of this map range node into the value here. And I'm just gonna organize this slightly better so we have a little bit more space. I'm gonna grab these guys and move them over here and grab this guy over here. Now I'll control shift and left click this guy. So now it's time to determine how rough we want this to be. And for the base value, or default, I want to change this to minimum to a 0.3. So that means the minimum roughness is going to be a 0.3. And the max, I'm going to change to a 0.6, like so. So then we can hit Shift A and search for a math node afterwards. Take the result of this map range into here. Check Clamp. And then now we can control shift left click this guy. And from here, we can change the roughness. If we want it to be darker, we can just move this. And it's like we have a roughness slider just like before. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this on a zero though for now. Then we'll take this value and move it into the roughness. So now all we have to do is factor in the colors, which is the fun part. And to do that, we're gonna add in a couple mix RGBs. So I'm gonna grab this and move this up here. I'll hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB, put that here, then I'll hit Shift D and duplicate it and put this one here. So this top one is gonna be the color of our bamboo, like the main green part, and this bottom one is gonna be the sort of rings in their color. So we wanna be able to factor these in using a noise texture so that they kind of mix properly. So we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a noise texture right here. And we're gonna take the mapping from this guy into the vector. Then we can control shift left click to preview them. And we're gonna switch the scale to a 50 and the detail to a 10, just so that we get some more variation in the colors. Then I'm going to press Shift A and search for a math node here. And what this guy is going to do is it's going to be able to determine how much of each color we want. So we'll take this factor and move it into here. And then Shift D. And then take this factor into here as well. Then we'll just take the values from these math nodes into our factors. 
So essentially what this is gonna do, oops, that's not the factor, is if I preview this mix node, I change this color to black, and then leave this one on white, this map node allows us to say we want more black, or we want more white, or we want more dark green, or more light greenish brown sort of a thing. So that's what that's gonna allow us to do. So now we're leaving these on zero, and then we're gonna take these mix nodes here, and I'm gonna change this color one right here, and I'll give you a hex value for our dark green. I'm gonna be using a 2E644B, again that is a 2E644B, like that. And this other color is gonna be like sort of a light brownish yellow, and that is a DED59F, again that is a DED59F, like this. So now our map range allows us to play with these colors. I'm gonna go over something that's a bit more newer, so this darker green right here. And as you can see on this, it's not really going with the grain, and that's because we're using this noise texture. And so we actually wanna take this map range and use this instead, and then we can control and right click this guy out of here. And so now we have the bamboo going with the grain, but the reason we have this noise texture is because on the bands, we don't want it going with the grain because it's not going vertically, it's going more horizontally and it's kind of like clumping up. So that's what this noise texture here is for on the other colors. So for these other colors, I'll control shift and left click. Then we're gonna take this color one and that hex value is gonna be an E4C591. Again, that is an E4C591 like this, sort of like a lightish brown yellow. And then this other one is gonna be a little bit darker. It's gonna be a B38, B52. Again, that is a B38, B52, like so. So now we have that color. And all we have to do is mix these together now. So I'm gonna press Shift A, search for a mix RGB here, like so. I'm gonna take this color into color two, and this one into color one. And then for the factor on this guy, we're gonna be taking this invert node and placing it here. So we control shift and left click, we can sort of see everything blending in together on the colors. And that is sort of good, but we wanna have a little bit more contrast here because the colors seem to be blurring a little bit too much there. And so we're gonna add in an extra mix node for a little bit more of detail. So we're gonna hit shift A, search for a mix node here. I'll put this one above. And then we're gonna take this color into color one. And then we're gonna take our bamboo color into color two again. Then we'll take the value from the less than node into the factor. And if we control shift and left click this guy, we can see that it's pretty much the same, but there is a little bit more contrast in what's going on there. And so, yeah, anyways, I'm just gonna check clamp on all of these color nodes so we make sure our values aren't going anywhere crazy. So we can just take this color and move it into our base color, control shift and left click the shader. And we sort of have our finished material here. We can rotate our lighting a little bit so we can get a better view. I'll switch this to like a 90 degrees so we can get more light on our objects. And yeah, now all we can do is adjust our colors how we want. We can say we want more white. We can say we want more of a mixed color in our bamboo. And yeah, we can adjust everything really easily, including the roughness and our bump. And so yeah, this is the finished material. Hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial and can use this in your renders. And remember the difference between the object and the UV mapping. On object, these are the settings. You have 0.25 on the Z on this one, and you're using Z on the wave texture. If you're using UV, you have 0 on the Z, 0.25 on the Y, and then you have Y on the wave texture, like this. And you may want to up the scale a little bit, something like a 2, but yeah. That's how you use the UV and the object mapping, and you can just use whichever one works best for you. And with that said, that is the end of this tutorial, and I will see you guys in the next one.